morning and welcome to our Sunday morning worship experience. We are so grateful to have you tune in with us today. Hope everyone out there is having a great week so far. And before I go any further, I want to take this special opportunity to say happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers that are out there today, whether they're watching or whatever they're doing. We love you so much and we appreciate all that you do and continue to do in our lives. So happy Mother's Day. Again, we thank you so much for tuning in today. It's, it's a joyful day. It's a grateful day. It's a day that the Lord has made and we have to make a decision to rejoice in it and we're so happy to be alive today amen and as again as you notice we are slowly the the whole world is slowly coming up out of the quarantine and things are beginning to open up and things are beginning to get back to movement i see more cars on the road see more people out shopping and people going to the beaches and things like that and that's good to see and i'm sure in a little while the churches will probably be opening back up too and we can fellowship again uh, uh as we can look so that we can look at each other and see each other amen but until that time, we'll continue to endeavor as we're doing. I thank you so much for your continuing to participate by watching. And your giving has been outstanding. Thank you so very much for being consistent in that. We thank you so very, very, very much for that. And thank you for your maturity in taking care of that in the name of Jesus. Uh, as far as LCU goes, we're coming to our last class of the semester. So if you're an LCU student, make sure you have all of your uh, paperwork in order and in to Mrs. Sullivan so that you can get your certificate diploma or whatever the case may be on time amen well today in the word of god today we have a not a special presentation but we're going to use a very familiar passage of scripture in uh observing everything that is going on in the world today and and uh, understanding we need encouragement and that's what we're going to be doing today but understanding and watching everything that's going on and how this virus caught the whole world off guard caught us totally unprepared uh, everybody totally unprepared. We were unprepared medically. We were unprepared scientifically. We were unprepared in every way that we could be. We did not expect it. We did not have any, I guess we didn't have any too much forewarning concerning it, but we were unequipped to deal with it. And therefore, there are a lot of people who have lost their lives because of that. And looking at that and, and preparing for this message today, it, the Spirit of God dawned on me, that we as believers must be ready for the expected and the unexpected. That, uh, that uh, our, our lives are not being governed and guided by the word of God for us to just kind of, to kind of uh, just walk through life with no direction or not be prepared for any circumstance or any situation that comes to pass. We are to be ready for the expected and the unexpected. So that's my subject for this morning. Ready for the expected and the unexpected. When I look at the scriptures or when I read the scriptures and I see the life of Jesus Christ, from the time he went into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil up until he went to Calvary, he was never caught off guard concerning anything or anyone. He was always prepared for what was, what was to be expected he was also very much prepared for what was unexpected because he always knew exactly what was going on. He always knew what the people were up to that were around him. And he was so closely in tune with the Holy Spirit inside of him. He was prepared for every circumstance and every situation. Uh, so I'm, I'm amazed today that even that in the church today, we, we go to church, but we never think in terms of the, 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 the teaching and the instruction that we are getting from the word of God is directly designed to prepare us for something. And to, to not only prepare us, but to make us ready to walk into something or to deal with something or to know something or to perceive something. And so I'm, 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 I'm amazed that we are not as thoroughly prepared as we should be. Uh, we, rather, we would rather be proactive in every situation. I mean, we would rather be reactive in every situation than to be proactive and allow God to grow us to be ready for whatever happens and whatever takes place. I hope that makes sense to you. It, let me give you a good example. Let's say, for instance, you sing in the choir. Let's say you sing in the choir and uh, you sing and, and, the, and, the, and the minister of music says, I want you to be a worship leader. I'm not ready for that. Well, what have you been coming for? 
I, I don't, I don't, I, what have you been coming for? But I, I just don't think I'm ready. I don't know. What have you been doing with all the messages and the teachings that you've been getting and receiving? Don't you know that they're designed to prep you and prepare you for something that you may be ready for and something you may not be ready for? I'm amazed that Jesus was always ready to go into any direction, into any circumstance, into any situation because he understood that by the power of God in him and the word of God, he was thoroughly prepared to deal with anything expected and anything unexpected. Say amen to that. So today we're going to use a very familiar passage of scripture and, and to help us understand that and to see that, that we are being prepared so that we can deal with any. Expected or unexpected situation. Say amen to that. In the book of Ephesians chapter 6, now this lesson today comes in three parts. I'm not going to give you the whole thing today. It's three parts. It's too long. We will be here probably at 4 o'clock and I know you got Mother's Day dinner thing happening and all of that. So we want to make sure that we get you out in plenty enough time to do that. But again, this message is designed to prepare you. If you're going through something or if you... If you uh, it's, it's not a matter of if you go through something, it's a matter of when. So you may be going through something now, but I guarantee you there's something on the horizon. There's always something on the horizon. And the Spirit of God in you is always putting you on notice that when something is going to happen, so you'll be ready, or he'll put you on notice that something's going to happen that you don't know about, so you'll still be ready. In other words, the Spirit of God in you and the Spirit of God in me preps us and prepares us for everything that's going to happen, whether we expect it to happen or whether we don't expect it to happen. We are to be prepared. Say amen to that. Glory be to God. So in Ephesians chapter 6, and before I do that, let me kind of wrap up the book of Ephesians for you in, in, a, in a couple of two or three things. First of all, the book of Ephesians written by Paul, and he wrote this book while he was in prison in Rome, okay, which is pretty cool, I think. Uh, and so, but the book of Ephesians is broken up into two parts, two basic parts. Part one uh, talks about the position of the church talks about the position of a church. In chapters 1, uh, verses 1 to 14, he talks about praise and redemption. And in verses 15 to 23 in chapter 1, he talks about praise and revelation. In, chap in chapter 2, verses 1 through 13, in chapters 3, 1 through 13, he talks about, or is, it teaches us the position of the church. And in chapter 3, verses 14 through 21, he teaches the church about prayer and realization. We're supposed to pray, and we're supposed to pray realizing who we are and the position that we have as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that neat? Part 2 talks about, and I like this part, it talks about the practice of Christian living. It talks about the practice. First, he talks about the position where God has placed us. In the second part of the book, he talks about the practice or the doing of the word of God as it relates to Christian living. Chapter 4, verses 1 through 16, talks about how we're supposed to practice the unity in the church. Chapter 4, verses 17 through chapter 5, verses 21, talks about uh, practicing holiness in our living. All right. And chapter four, verse uh, chapter five, I'm sorry, verses 20 through through chapter six, verse nine talks about the responsibilities in the home and at work. And then the last one, chapter six, verses 10 to 24, talks to us about how we're supposed to practice our conduct in conflict. How we're supposed to practice ourselves. So so this book kind of gives the, the believer a, a real rounded uh teaching and instruction, which makes the believer thoroughly prepared to respond and be ready for any expected or unexpected situation to take place in their life. But the main focus of the book, the main focus of the book is to strengthen Christians in their faith by explaining the nature and purpose of the church, which is the body of Christ. And one of that Things we're supposed to understand is we need to be ready for what is expected or what is unexpected. As I stated before, Jesus is our prime example on how to do that. He was always prepared for every circumstance and every situation. Like I said before, there are three things in this text that takes place in chapters in chapter uh, 6, verses 10 to 12. There are three things that Paul mentions, but I'm gonna, only going to give you one today, 
And we'll do the, the next one Wednesday and probably the next one next Sunday when we come back together. But there are three things in this particular text that he wants to show us or teach us or instruct us in that will help us, help us be thoroughly prepared and ready for any unexpected or expected activity that shows up in our life. Amen? Let's go with me to the text. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 10. He says, as he comes to the end of this text, he says, Finally, my brethren... Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Verse 11. He says, <clears throat> put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And verse number 12. He says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, comma, but against what? Principalities, comma against powers, comma, against the rulers of darkness in this world, comma, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So he gives us three things that we're to know and to do in order to be ready for any unexpected or expected circumstances to come in our lives. Let's go to verse number 10 and we look at the first one. Num verse number 10 says, finally, comma, my brethren, be strong, what? In the Lord, not in yourself, not in someone else. Be strong in the Lord. It, it sounds like he's saying you need to make yourself dependent on the ability of God, the power of God, the wisdom of God, the strength of God, of the compassion of God. You need to throw yourself on his mercy and find the strength you need. But it's deeper than that. But he says, finally, my brethren, be what? Strong in the Lord and in the what? Power of his might. So it sounds like as Paul gets ready to close out this, this book that he, is, uh, that he has just written to the church at Ephesus. And like I said, he writes this from Rome just before he's about to go into prison or he may have been in prison. So his mindset as he writes this, he writes this from a man who's in prison. He writes this book from a man who is either in prison or about to go to prison, and he knows he's for sure to go into prison. He's not going to get bonded out. He's not going to get reprieved. He's not going to get acquitted. He knows for a fact God has already prepped him that this, this prison where he's going to go in is the final place that he will be. He's going to die in this prison. They're going to behead him, behead him in that prison. So he writes from a perspective of how to find yourself or how to prepare yourself for what is expected or un unexpected. And he says, one of the things you need to do is you need to find your strength in God. I wish I had a witness. Find your strength in God. I call this, this first verse number 10, I call it uncommon strength and power. See, when you're, when you're going through, when, not when you're going through, yeah, when, when you are facing what is expected or unexpected, you need to be able to lock into or sync up with some uncommon or unusual strength. Say a minute, that. Some unusual, some kind of uncommon, uh, let's, let's, let's take it deeper, some kind of unnatural ability. Uh, an ability that goes beyond your wisdom, an ability that goes beyond your personal knowledge, an ability that goes beyond maybe even your personal, your personal strength. Maybe you have a strong emotional background where nothing moves you. You need something stronger than that. Because I guarantee you there are things that are going to come in your life that are going to literally shake, rattle, and roll you almost out of your mind. So we need to, we need to be able to... To, to extract or tap into an uncommon strength and power. That's what Jesus, Jesus was able to tap into a strength that was beyond his physical capacity. He was able to, to hook up with a, a strength and a power that was beyond his fleshly ability to do anything. In other words, he threw. He, he always was able to throw himself on the power and the ability and the strength of the God he served through the Holy Spirit within him. And that's how he was able to be thoroughly prepared for what was expected. 
even when he announced to his disciples that he had to go to Jerusalem. And when he got to Jerusalem, he was going to be brutalized, beaten, and then put on the cross and killed and died and then buried, but rise again the third day. They had a fit. They had a fit. They had been walking with him for three years. And by him saying that, it proves that they were not listening to what he was teaching them along the way. They did not get it until after the Spirit, the Holy Spirit came and filled them that they understood what he said and what he was all about. So we need to be, make ourselves ready for all the unexpected, expected things that are going to happen in our lives. Jesus told us, and I'm going to paraphrase this. Jesus said, when the spirit of truth is come, come where? Come into you. He will guide you into what? All truth. If that's not preparing me for expected and unexpected task, I don't know what is. He will guide you what? Into all truth. Isn't it fantastic? And it's probably difficult for a lot of us to understand. The spirit of God in you, he knows about anything that's concerning this planet and anything else. And he's in you just standing by waiting for you to put yourself on him so that he can now equip you for everything that you're going to come against. Everything that you're going to face. Everything that you're going to deal with. Why? So you'll be ready. So you'll know how to deal. You'll know how to handle it. You'll know how to deal with the people. You'll know how to deal with the circumstance. Mainly because you won't be caught off guard. I wish I had a witness. It's quiet out there, isn't it? She says, so in the New Living Translation, let me look at, read that for you, the New Living Translation. It says, a final word, my final word. It's the same as finally, which means, finally in the text has to do with, and the rest of what I got to say is contained in this. A final word, semicolon, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Now, you must get the concept of where and how he's writing this from prison. How many people you know can talk like this in prison? So if Paul can encourage me from prison, it had to mean that he was prepared for the unexpected circumstances he found himself in. You see, what you don't want to miss, what you don't want to miss in the text and in these teachings that he's going to give you is that he was in prison. Prison is designed to shut people down. Prison is designed to stifle your creativity. Prison is designed to kill your hope and to kill your dreams and to demolish your faith. I wish I had a witness. But here he is. In jail or on his way to jail and knowing it, but thoroughly equipped because he's thrown himself on the ability of God. He's thrown himself on God's mercy and God's compassion and God's power. That is how he is able now for the spirit of God in him to write out this verbiage to encourage those who are not in prison. But to prepare them for what's about to happen. Can you say amen? So he says the final word to you is this. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. Say amen to that. This kind of, this, he says, be strong. This kind of strength that he's talking about is a believer must be, no, a believer has to have the faith to believe that whatever he, she, you, or I face, there's an equipping from the Holy Spirit that is available to us. That's what the strong is. The strong, has, the strong in the text has nothing to do with your educational level. I don't care how many PhDs you got. Got a couple of them myself. I don't care how long you went to college, went there too, did that, got the diploma, the cap and gown and all of that. I, I know. I don't care how many, how many, much money you've made. It, all of that doesn't matter. He says there is an equipping that comes from the Holy Spirit. That will equip you for the unexpected or the expected things that are going to pop up on your journey or on the road God has placed you on. So it's an equipping. Somebody out there say equipping. It's an equipping. It's an equipping. Say equipping out there. It's an equipping which means that. Now you get an idea of what this looks like. When Jesus, was, when Jesus came up out of the river Jordan, the spirit of God descended on him like a dove. And now, what does he do? What you miss in the text is, when the Spirit of God descended on Jesus like a dove, he equipped him. 
He gave him. Well, he said he was Jesus. Yeah, he was Jesus, but he was in human form. So he had to be equipped to go into the wilderness to do battle with the devil. He had to have a special equipping, or like you would like to say, you, you wear this word out, anointing. He had to have this anointing. It's nothing but an equipping. They're the same thing to just live, use different words. He had to have, he had to be supplied with this anointing slash or ability that only could come from the, pit, the spirit of God that was within him or on the inside of him. You and I must be alerted that that equipment is still available for us today. The spirit of God already knows what's going to happen. You can never catch him off God because he is God. So he always expects what's to be expected. He always expects even the unexpected. In other words, he can see into my tomorrow while I'm in the day after tomorrow. Amen. Say amen to that. So he always knows. So his guidance for me and his guidance towards me is to lead me into all truth, which means he then is available and must equip me for everything that I'm going to enter into. He, ha he must. Now, the key to that is I have to. Now, there's a verse in scripture that says, cast all your cares on him for he cares for you. Can you say amen to that? Cast all your cares. It has the idea of throw all your stuff on the one who can carry your stuff because he don't want you to carry that stuff. I wish I had a witness out there. Cast all your cares, all your worry, all your fear, all your doubt, all your anxiety, all your not knowing, all your weariness, all your tiredness, all your sicknesses. He says, cast, throw it, cast it, cast it all on him. Why? For he cares for you. The idea of the text is get rid of all your fleshly human stuff. Let God take it. Why? Because he want to care for you. He wants to give you the ability. He wants to equip you. He wants to thoroughly empower you to deal with anything that comes in your life. Ooh, sounds like I got to empty out my jar and let the fifth spirit of God fill it with his stuff. I wish I had a witness. So he says in the text, he said in the text, be strong, be, the, be equipped, say be equipped. So you and I must walk in a life or walk in the knowledge of, watch this, here my mindset changes. This is where my thought process changes. I am thoroughly prepared for, it, for, for whatever is about to, become, about to come upon me. I'm thoroughly prepared to deal with whatever is about to come that I know is coming. I'm thoroughly prepared to deal with what I don't know is coming that is coming. I'm ready. But you don't know what's coming. It doesn't matter. I'm ready. You don't know who's coming with it. It doesn't matter. I'm ready. Why? Because there's an equipping that belongs to me, and it's going to come from the power of the Holy Spirit in me. I'm ready for Monday, and Monday's not here. And I'm ready for everything that Monday brings, and I don't even know if I'm going to live to Monday. If I live to Monday, I'm, if I live to Monday, I'm going to be ready. I'm going to be equipped. If I die tonight, I won't have to worry about money. Money will take care of itself. I'm going to glory. I'm still going to be equipped. Amen. I wish I had a witness. I'm ready. Say amen to that. I'm ready for whatever comes because I understand the equipping. Quick testimony. Friday night we were here in prayer. If you were watching, the enemy attacked me in my throat. Say amen to that. I have been talking fine for since I don't know when. And I get ready to get here and get ready to pray. And my voice, my throat starts acting up. My, I couldn't get my words out. I had to pop, stop for a minute and equip myself. How did I equip myself? I took authority over the enemy trying to shut my voice down so I couldn't pray and went on and never had another interruption the whole night. And to this day, never had another interruption. See, you and I must understand that we are thoroughly, we have an equipping power within us. Say equipping out there. You don't have to struggle in anything. You're not supposed to struggle in anything. Relationships, you're supposed to be equipped. The key to it is knowing what you have and understanding how to use it. And, and squeeze out of the Holy Spirit that which he's already ready to let loose. I wish I had a witness. Now, so he said, be strong in the Lord and in the what? Power. 
Be strong in the Lord. You're going to acquire this strength from God. The Holy Spirit within you. The in the Lord is to acquire. Acquire means to get something or, 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 or yeah, or to receive something. To acquire strength. Say amen to that. To acquire strength. Like I said, this strengthen is not in the realm of natural ability, but it also can be. Remember, Samson acquired strength from the Lord. Yeah, his strength was supernatural. So this strength for us may not be physical, but it can be. But it's more so, in a, it's another kind of equipping, another kind of strength, meaning the ability to deal with circumstances and situations and not be overthrown by them. You see? To acquire strength. So in the midst of what is expected, in the midst of what is unexpected, I can acquire, say acquire. I can acquire what I need from the Lord, at the Lord, the Holy Spirit inside of me. So he says, finally, my brethren, everybody all right? Now, be strong in the Lord in the power of his might, 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 his might, in his ability to perform. So you're going to be you're going to be equipped. You're going to acquire this ability, this strength from the Lord in his ability. Be strong in his ability. Acquire the strength in his ability. Now, now we're now we're actually which we've been talking about him the whole time. We're talking about the Holy Spirit inside of you and I. And in the power of his ability. Be strong in God's ability to perform through you. Ah, there it is. Be confident that the power of God, the Holy Spirit inside of you, is standing by, ready to accomplish the task through you, but you got to get out of the way. That's what I told you. Remember, you, I, I talked to you the other day about protecting your anointing. When you have to, in order to protect your anointing, you have to lean and depend on the power of the Holy Spirit inside of you. Which means, how you, how you get yourself out of the way is not responding to the expected or the unexpected in the natural man's way. Amen. Say amen to that. But they did me wrong. Yeah, but you don't want to blow your anointing. Now, you, you have, yeah, according to the laws of the land, you got every right to tell them off just like they told them off. But the, you, you run the risk of upsetting your anointing. Yeah. Yeah. Because once you do that, now you got to ask for forgiveness. You got to repent. You got to, and now saying, if you don't do it, it does tap into and bother with the flow of the anointing on your life. Say me to that. So you have to, that's how, that's how we have to deal with the thing. So if I'm going to tap into God's ability, I have to relinquish all my natural man's ability that's still in me. You're still in me. Oh, yeah, don't think that. Oh, don't think. Pastor, he don't know how, Pastor know how to say words you've never heard before. Apostle Hodge knows no phrases he can put together that would amaze you. But Pastor Hodge has to do the same thing you have to do, and that's every circumstance he faces, every situation he faces, he makes a decision to not use his natural ability, but to rely on the supernatural ability of the Holy Spirit inside of him. And that's where you and I, that's how we are ready for the unexpected. Look at me, look at 2 Timothy 4, 17 and 18. Let me show you what this equipping looks like. This is what, this is what uh, Paul wrote to Timothy while he was in prison. In verse 17 of 2 Timothy chapter 4, he says, Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Do you hear that? Look at verse number 18. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. And will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Now I'm going to read those two verses to you in the living translation. Hang on now. He says in verse 17, but the Lord stood with me and gave me strength so that I might preach the good news 
in its entirety for all Gentiles to see or to hear. Verse 18. Yes, and the Lord will deliver me from every evil attack and will bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. All glory to God forever and ever. What Paul shows us in that that text, he shows us how we can depend on the power of God in us to be there when we need him. He stood with me. He strengthened me. He positioned me. He poised me for what? For the preaching of the gospel. In him standing with me, he even made the people hear me. And then making them hear me, he even made them understand what I was saying. Y'all don't hear me. You see, I'm depending on you know, that man. No, that man can't preach a thing except he depend on the power of God. He, he doesn't know anything about scripture except he depends on the power of God. He has the ability to pray. He can't pray a note, see a thing happen except he depends on the ability of God. By myself, nothing. With God, I'm a bad man. Can you say amen to that? So he says, and I know if God can do that, in verse 18 he says, and he will deliver me from what? Every evil attack and every evil work of the devil and will do what? Protect me, provide for me, preserve me until what? His heavenly kingdom. And then he says, so I'm going to shout, glory be to God forever. And you know what amen means? Let it be. It's going to happen for me. So remember the concept. He's talking from prison now. So Paul says, I have witnessed God. You see? And, then, and, 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 and I have been watching ever since this thing hit. I have been watching. And I'm going to have told you before. Think about it. I've been in the presence. I know of people who've had the virus. I got no proof of it, but I just know it. It's just impossible for me not to have come in contact with somebody who not, doesn't have the virus. Maybe they didn't have any symptoms, but I know I have. Say a minute. Today. I know I have been in the close proximity. There were times when I couldn't, I had to pass somebody. I may have come out of a restroom that somebody just used that had it. They touched the door. I touched the door. Say a minute. Today. I know you try to do the six foot thing, but come on now. Come on. I am uninfected today because I trust God and his ability to protect me. If nothing else, this virus has shown us that we lack the ability to protect ourselves like we thought we could protect ourselves. And we need the awesome presence of God to help us. Still, we don't have a cure. We don't have a vaccine yet. That's going to take care of this thing. And I'm still believing what I believe God told me. It's going to disappear the same way it's appear it appeared. Nobody knows where it came from. And nobody's going to know where it went. Because the power of God is at work. Glory be to God. Now, now when, you, when you understand how to, to tap into the source of your strength, and the source of your power. Before I go to this next verse, I want to encourage everybody, every believer out there today. Move away from the fear that you're not prepared. I want you to move away from that. I want you to move away from the concept of it. I want you to move away from the thinking of it. I want you to move away from the fear of it. Say amen to that. Because you are prepared. You have to trust the spirit of God inside of you. Say amen to that. But you will never, you will never understand what it's like when Paul described how God stood with him by his power, the Holy Spirit, and how he equipped him and how he watched over him, preserved him. You will never experience that as long as you live in a life of fear, doubt, and unbelief. And especially if you keep looking at yourself as a person who hadn't been delivered from the junk you've been delivered from. Can you say amen to that? Now, so what, is, what are we supposed to learn from this concept number one? Uncommon power. What should our attitude be when we come face to face with any circumstance or any situation? Can, can I get a witness out there? What should, what should my mindset be now? 
What should my attitude be? What should my conversation be now that I understand that I have this available to me, this power, this might, this ability of God available? It, it, it should change my thinking, right? And, it, and it, if my thinking changes concerning it, then what I say should change concerning it also. Well, let's find the verse of scripture that will help us navigate and move towards the reality of who we are by tapping into this uncommon power and this uncommon ability of God by his spirit that was in us. Turn with me to Philippians 4, 11. We should gain from what we've heard already confident by an enabling power. We should have now confidence because we are enabled by the power of God. Enabled, again, means equip. You know, um, on the iPhone, which I'm a big fan of, and Mario on the Androids and some others, they have this. Uh, when you go into your apps, there are certain things you have to go in there and enable. You have to go in and hit a button to enable certain apps to do certain things. If you don't enable the app, the app will not respond. You have to hit the button, and, and on iPhone, it goes from white to green, which means this app has been enabled. So if it's an app that monitors phone calls or whatever, it's enabled or it's given the authority. Oh, God, it's given the authority in the phone to do that because I went in and enabled it by hitting the button. Now, you can also go in that same phone and do the same thing, hit that button again and go back to white. That will disable that function. Say amen to that. The, they have made uh, cell phones so uh, proactive that now you can enable, disable so many things on it. But they ask you many times when you're setting up your phone, they always ask you or tell you in advance what to enable. And then they say enable this because it will give you the ability to do this. The main one I like is the download for updates. You know why I like that? Because if you enable that in your phone, you can put a time and a date and an hour every time you're going to get new updates. And so the only thing you're going to get is a reminder, oh, your new updates are in. And they will be downloaded at a specific time you indicated on your phone. I love that. You know what that means? That means what once I said it, right, those things come very unexpectedly. You missed that. But it doesn't matter because my phone is ready. You know why? Because I pre-planned in advance and took care of that. Right? Why? Because when you miss updates and you don't get those updates on time, right, and you got like three or four backed up, your phone does not work properly. Because every update is designed to get bugs out and to get things out of the way that it may be slowing processes down or slowing the phone down from working properly. Say amen to that. I wish I had a witness. In, you and I have the spirit of God in us and we can get ourselves set in advance so we can get the downloads for everything we're going to need before we need it and never have to worry about it again. So what should my attitude be? Now that I understand this, turn with me to Philippians 4, verse number 11. It says, Paul says, he's in prison. Philippians 4, 11. He says, I know how to be abased. Then he says, and I know how to abound. See the pre-planning? See the pre-planning? Everywhere and in all things, I am, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. And that's the Philippians 4.12, I'm sorry. He says, Paul says, I know. What he says, I understand now. I know how to pre-program myself. I know how to what? Abase. I know how to abound. He says, everywhere and in all things, I'm what? I'm instructed. Who teaches you, Paul? You're in prison. Do you have somebody from the church to come and give you a Bible study? Who teaches you, Paul? You're in prison. Do they let you out on Sunday morning to go to 11 o'clock worship? Who teaches you, Paul? 
You're so deep in the dungeon. Do they let you have a reprieve on Wednesday night to go to Wednesday night Bible study? Who teaches you, Paul? Do they release you every first and second Friday to go to corporate prayer? Who teaches you, Paul? Do you have the Internet in your cell where you can tune in to up radio on Fridays at 11 a.m.? Who teaches you, Paul? Who instructs you? Who is giving you these instructions on how to conduct yourselves in these different situations? Paul says, I'm instructed, I'm taught, I'm learned how to both be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Now, he's in, now he says, Paul says, I have been, tra- I'm, I'm instructed in every expected and unexpected situation how to deal with either one. If I got a lot, I know how to live like I got a lot. If I don't have a lot, I know how to live like I don't know. Everywhere I find myself, there's a teaching available to me by the Holy Spirit that prepares me for where I am and prepares me for where I'm going to. I wish I had a witness. In verse number 13, then he said, the realization is then, this, that's really not the realization. That's what's available. The realization is this, what, this is what my mindset should be now. I can do what? All things. I can do all things through Christ, the Holy Spirit, who's what? That's that strengthening again that empowers, that equips me. You see it? I'm going through, say, yeah. Anybody, there, there's not a believer who doesn't have a circumstance or a situation on the table right now. There's not one. There's no such thing as not having a situation or a circumstance on the table. Because if you're a believer in this world, you're going to have some tribulation. Now, it may not be as, as difficult as the one another person has. may not be as intense as one another person has. But to you, it's just as intense. Why? Because it's your situation. Can you say amen to that? So what should your attitude be? Wait. Lose the attitude, I'm a believer, I'm not supposed to have trouble. Lose that. Instead, I'm a believer who knows how to respond to trouble. I'm a believer who knows how to respond to expected trouble. I'm a believer who knows how to respond to unexpected trouble. But the main thing, I'm a believer who's going to win in both. Can you say amen to that? Now I'm going to give you that verse, that same two verses, Philippians 4, 12, and 13 in the New Living Translation, and we're going to wrap this thing up. Can you say amen? He says, verse 3, he says, I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I wish I had a witness. He's in jail now, and according to theologians, when he was in, where Paul was, they gave him bread and water. You can't get no bare minimum than that. You can't get too much bare minimum. He says, I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. Then he says, I have learned the secret of living in every situation. Whether it is with a full stomach or empty, comma, with plenty or little. He says, I have, go back to that verse. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. You see the the teaching? I'm instructed, I'm taught, the Holy Spirit teaches me on how to live whether I have it all or I have nothing. And I'm sure if he were here with us, he would say, and all points in between. He says, I've learned the secret. What's the secret? The secret is learning how to tap into the power and the ability of God, the Holy Spirit in me, in what? Every living situation that I come in contact with. That's the key. The secret is I have learned the secret of living in every situation. He didn't say surviving, living. I'm living in every situation. Then he said, whether the situation is full, whether my stomach is full, whether our stomach is empty or with plenty or little, it doesn't matter. The spirit of God is going to navigate me and teach me how to respond accordingly. That's available to me. It's not if I can have it, it's when I access it. When I get it released on me. And the way I get it released is to cast my care on him for he cares for me. Can you say amen to that? And then in verse 13 in the Living Translation, he says, For I can do everything through Christ who does what? Gives me strength. I can do everything. Now, that through everything Christ, that's Jesus, the word of God, right? Now, I'm real curious now, Paul. Wait a minute. In your day, they didn't have these paper Bibles. And they didn't have these electronic Bibles. 
And in your day, prisons did not get recreational time, and there was no computer labs. Where did this word come from that you were relying on and that you could write to us and help us? Paul says, where do you think it came from? It came from the ability to endure the same strength that I received to learn how to live with much and little. It's the same power that brings back to my memory what I was taught by Jesus Christ and he's using me right now to write to you. Amen. Say amen. See, oh, 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 we the church underestimate the ability of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Holy Ghost is God. Amen. The Holy Ghost is Jesus. There's not a thing he can't do. There's not a thing he does not know. There's not a position he's not thoroughly equipped to make sure we are victorious in every one. There's not one. So the, the spirit of God is the power of God. The spirit, the spirit of God is the ability of God. The spirit of, the spirit of God is the all-encompassed teaching ability of God. But you remember in Jesus, Genesis, and the spirit of God moved upon the waters. What was he waiting on? For God to give him some instruction. And then the Bible says, and God smoked. God said, let there be light. And the spirit of God, boom, there's light. Standing by. He's standing by waiting for you and I to let him loose in our circumstance. Watch this. Don't make the fatal mistake of letting him loosen your circumstances without letting him loosen you. He has to work through you, which means your circumstances must be conducive so he can operate and anoint you to survive in the present day situation, in the present day circumstance. Say amen to that. So we want to make sure to be ready, we got to tap into this uncommon power, this uncommon ability of the Holy Spirit who is within us. He did it for Jesus. Jesus tapped into him and he was able to take it all the way to Calvary, to the grave and beyond. Say amen to that. Because he even spoke. If you, destroy, if you destroy this temple, Easter just passed. If you destroy this temple, three days later, I'll do what? I'll raise it again. Why are you so positive about that, Jesus? Because I have seen myself going in the grave. But better than that, I saw myself getting raised. That's why I said in three days. I can put a time limit on it because I've seen the three days happen. I've seen me come out of the grave. And I've seen myself with all power in my hand. Why? God showed it to me by his spirit. See it? The spirit of God is there to guide us into all truth and to lead us into all truth. Are you ready for that truth? Are you prepared to be taken to that, into that truth? Are you, are you prepared for, are you prepared, prepared to relinquish all your physical and earthly holes and mindsets and cast them on God so that the spirit can prep you and get you ready for the expected and the unexpected? If you're one of them people who like to control everything with your own manipulation and your own ability, I wonder if you're even saved. If you're a person who likes to manipulate things and control things and, and cause evil things to happen because you think you're smart, you're only fooling yourself. You're only fooling yourself. God is not fool. And people who are in love with him and walk by the spirit, you're not fooling them either. They just don't want to be bothered with you. They just let you have it. You see? But if you're really a believer, it's time. Now watch it. You think this virus is the last of it? I'm here to tell you, prophetically speaking, this is not the only challenge the world is going to have before Christ comes back. If anything this challenge has shown us is how frail and fragile human people are. It doesn't matter what color you are. You know, this virus is an equal opportunity attacker. Say amen to that. He doesn't care what, there's all, there's, he doesn't care your skin color, your blood type, or your race, ethnicity, or nationality. If, you, if the conditions are right and you get near him and get near it or it get near you, it will say, I welcome myself home in your body. But I'm black. I don't care. But I'm white. Could care less. I'm oriental. So, so what? I'm this. I don't care. 
You are a body. You are a human body, and I infect human bodies. How fragile we are. How frail we are. How unequipped we are to protect ourselves from a germ. Except by the power of God. If the power of God, the spirit of God, can equip Jesus to go to Calvary, be put to death, buried in a tomb, but raised again the third day, I, I do believe he's qualified to protect me from what modern medicine can't even see. Learn. There's an old song we used to say, and I'm done. There's an old song. I've learned how to lean and depend on Jesus. He's my strength, and he's my guide. I found out that if I trust him, he will provide. I want to leave you with this thought. Learn how to lean and depend on Jesus. He's your strength and he's your God. Then you'll find out that it's easy to trust him. And you will also find out that he will provide. Come on, put your hands together. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise. God is able. God is ready to, to equip us and to prepare us for every unexpected, expected circumstance, situation in our lives. Wouldn't it be great to wake up every day and the Holy Spirit has given you a list of everything that's going to happen and everybody that's going to say something, everybody that's going to do something. Then he'll say, then he'll give you another list. Now, don't avoid anybody. Just go into every circumstance, every situation, not only knowing what they're going to say and knowing what they're going to do, but be prepared to deal with all of it. All the Judases in your life, you're going to know them. You're going to know what they're going to do. You're going to know what they're going to say. But at the same time, you'll know exactly how to deal with them. And they're not a threat to you because you're the child of God. And you are blessed with the spirit inside of you. And there is no weapon formed to get you that shall prosper. This is God's promise to you. Can you say amen? amen. Can you say amen again? Amen. One more time, say amen. Isn't that wonderful? God bless you. God keep you. Isn't that wonderful to know? Like that's part one. That part one. We got part two coming. This is a power. I think this is a powerful teaching. And it's going to help us again uh, get ourselves in position to lean and depend on the power of God in us and not ourselves. Amen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do an invitation. I got some special announcements after this. I'm going to do an invitation first. And then we're going to do some special announcements. And then we're ready to go. Amen. Oh, uh, now, the word has gone forth. If you are out there watching by whatever means, and you have not made Jesus the Lord of your life, okay, this is to a person. Now, if you're not sure, let's do it to make sure. But if you have it, if you have not made a confession of Jesus Christ as Lord by belief and co confession, Romans 10, 9 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible declares that you shall be saved. So I want to lead you through a prayer of salvation. And if you're out there and you're ready by the word of God going forth and you're ready to turn your life over to Christ, repeat this with me. Father, I am a sinner. I have sinned before you and before heaven. But right now in the name of Jesus, I ask you to come into my life and I give you permission to be the Lord of my life. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son, God. And I also believe, God, that you, by the power of the Holy Spirit, raised him from the dead. And I also believe that he sits at your right hand even now. I confess all my sins. And I declare today that by my belief and confession, I am saved to have an eternal destination with God. And so from this point on, from this moment on, I turn my face from the things of the world. 
and I turn my face toward the things of God. Thank you, God, for saving me. Thank you, God, for welcoming me into your family. If you just prayed that prayer with me, you are saved. Now, here we go. That's phase one. Phase one, the door is open. Salvation gets you into the yard of God. But you haven't got the promises yet. You haven't learned how to access the promises. That's where discipleship comes in. That's where Jesus told the guys he met on the seashore, come follow me and I will make you fishermen of men. Follow Jesus. Follow the teachings. Learn the word of God. So that means you need to now uh, acquire or aspire to a church that teaches the word of God so you can understand it, teaches you how to put that word of God into operation, show you how to get filled with the Holy Spirit so you can begin to capitalize on these promises that God has given you. Without the understanding of the world, you will be a carnal believer. You will be saved but still participating in wrong things. And we don't want that. We want you to come up out of that. So if you prayed that prayer, now you can, you can contact us via internet, email, whatever, to let us know your decision. And we can guide you from there uh, properly on what the next step to take and how we can help you in that process. Amen. Uh, so we thank you so much. Now, if you're out there. And let's say you're, let's say for lack of a better term, you've backslidden. You, maybe you walked away from the church or maybe you walked away from God. Maybe something happened, a circumstance, and that's possible because the prodigal son, he decided he just wanted to leave. You know, so, but if you're out there, how do you, the question may be looming in your mind, how do I renew my relationship with God? 1 John 1, 9 tells us that if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you your sins and then do what? purify you from all unrighteousness. That's restoration right there. So if you're out there and you're in that situation, this is how you get back. Now, watch it. You don't have to repent over and over and over and over again unless you're doing something wrong over and over and over again. Okay? So we're going to fix this one time. The Bible says if you confess your sins. Now what do I do, Pastor? Do I list them all? No, you can't remember everything you've done wrong. I couldn't. This is what you do. You tell God, I have sinned before you and I confess that I have sinned. I, have, I confess that I have done things and said things and acted in things and participated in things that are not pleasing in your sight. But according to your word, if I confess, which I am doing now, that you are faithful and just to do what? Forgive me. So I thank you now that my, my confession of my sins has granted me your forgiveness and my slate is clean. And now I stand under the stream of the blood of Jesus. And I declare by my faith that blood that falls on me now is cleansing me of all the attachments that may have attached themselves to me that I participated in that are not godly. And I thank you, God, for forgiving me. And I thank you for my restoration in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, let's foolproof your prayer of restoration. Let's foolproof it. You need the same discipleship training that a new believer needs. The reason you fell backwards and the reason you backslid because you have not got your mind regenerated yet by the word of God. And that's what a Bible teaching, Bible believing, instructing church will do. Show you, teach you how to understand the word of God and then teach you how to take that word and use it in your everyday life. Oh, yeah. There's more to this life than just walking around with a Bible in your hand. There is actually an ability to use the Bible or become the Bible. Say amen to that. So we thank you. So if anyone out there that sir, uh, sir, um, responded to those two invitations, thank you so much for your courage. Thank you so much for your understanding. Now, again, if either one of you have made that decision, drop us an email, drop us some kind of call, or let us know what you have done so we can help you now participate in the discipleship process to make you a strong, solid believer so God can, pre prep, can prepare you and prep you for every expected and unexpected circumstance and situation. Thank you so much for that. Now, I have two, th two announcements I want to make. First, we have some graduations in our congregation. If you're looking at it, you see Kamara Early. She's graduating from St. Pete High School. She's graduating the IB program, and she's a 2020 high school graduate. So if you're out there, make sure you give her a big round of applause of Kamara from the Word of Life Fellowship family, especially me and Mrs. Hodge. We want to congratulate you. Man, your time went by so fast. 
You have graduated high school. And we are so sorry that you can say, but we are celebrating with you. We are celebrating for you. Thank you so very, very much. And especially thank you for your ability to go through all 12 years of high school and stay at the top echelon of the gray scale. Thank you so very much for your hard work ethic. We know God is going to reward you as you prepare now to go to the next phase, and that is college. With college in mind, we have one college graduate. That is graduating. Yes, that's it. Our very own Tenora DeSaul is graduating from the University of South Florida. Go Bulls! With a degree in criminology. How about that? Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Her mama is jumping right now. I'm jumping right now. We are really trying to get rid of this girl. But in the name of Jesus, we are so grateful to God for getting her. That girl has gone through four years of school. She has never had any difficulty in her classes. She has never had to repeat any classes. And we thank God for her tenacity, for her ability to go through and pass. So she's now graduating with a degree in criminology. To her and Kimora, we say congratulations and to both of you again on behalf of the Word of Life Fellowship family, me and Mrs. Hyde, we are so very, very proud of you. Everybody out there give them a thumbs up or a field goal or some kind of class. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise for Kimora and Tenora. Now, uh, we don't know, we, well, you know, the graduation thing is, but uh, I think Tenora will do, has just done a virtual graduation, and I think they're supposed to try to do something else in August for them. So it is a privilege, and I want to uh, encourage both of you. You know, I know, remember the lessons I taught you on for God's glory. Everything you do is for God's glory. Everything you do is for God's glory. Everything you do. It's for God's glory. Everything you do has to be for God's glory because you never know when man is going to interrupt the traditional process. You see? I am not disappointed you can't march. I hope that you understand all you did for those 12 years was for God's glory, and that's why you got the diploma. That's why you got the degree. You see, and I know there's an inkling inside of you that want, you, you want everyone to see you march down the aisle with your cap and gown. God saw you doing this before the foundation of the earth. Amen. This is just the day it became a reality. And just because man says we can't give you the traditional graduation where everybody's walking you, God says in heaven right now, you just walk down the aisle. Jesus just handed you your diploma, and the Holy Spirit just equipped you for the next phase of your life. So be grateful to God. Be thank and do what? Thank your mamas. Thank your daddies. Thank your families for hanging tough with you. Watch. Look back over the college career. Look back over the high school career and see what the hand of God was doing along the way. How he supplied and met the need, not once, not twice, but every time. Enjoy your graduation. Be thankful to God. God bless you. God keep you. We celebrate the two of you today. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Well, again, it's Mother's Day. And if I don't do a tribute to mothers, well, I'm going to be in trouble. So this next short video is my way of saying to all the mothers out there, happy Mother's Day. We love you. We appreciate you. Let's watch this video. Short video.
Mothers again, happy Mother's Day to you, to our two graduates, Kimora and Tenora. Congratulations, big, big accomplishments in your life, big starts in your life. Thank you so very, very much for the accomplishments and for the, uh, the, the completion of those big events in your life life. Amen. Well, don't forget, we'll be here again Wednesday night at 7 p.m. as we'll go to the Word of God, and I will give you part two, part two of how to be ready for the expected and the unexpected. And don't forget to listen to us on Up Radio on Friday at 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time when we will go to the Word of God again to encourage us. And I hope you are doing well doing this thing as the cities, as the counties, as the different states begin to open up. Please, again, watch our website. You have all the latest information on what's opening, what, what is not opening, what is closed, and how to conduct yourself so you'll know. But we thank God that we are coming up out of this and we thank, because it's by his hand that, he, that we're doing it. And it's by his ability, by his power that we're making it happen. So we thank you and we praise you. Thank you so much for looking in on us today. Remember, if you, if you are out there and he accepted one of those invitations for salvation or restoration, please let us know so we can escort you through the process and help you become a great disciple. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in today. It's been great having you with us. God bless you. God keep you. The face of his anointing shine upon you and give you peace is our prayer for you today. In Jesus name I pray and the people of God that agree said amen. Amen again. One more time say amen. Have a great day.